this doll made me age 57 years. <laughs> hey Sparkles, what's up? And welcome back to Moonlight Jewel. Today is one of the craziest projects I've ever done. I've been invited to a Genshin Impact collab and got the chance to make one of my favorite characters, Noelle. Before I'm showing you the process, make sure to check out all my friends dolls as well. I've linked their socials in the description box below. Oh, and by the way, I will be starting to upload edited VOD highlights from my stream-only projects to my main channel soon, so that you guys have something to watch in between. And also, I have a public Discord server now, so if you want to join the Sparkle Squad, click the link in the description box below. Alright, but without further ado, let's dive into this massive project. To make this project even crazier than it already was, Blue Pixie suggested that she would sculpt a whole ball joint doll for Noelle and for her doll she wanted to make. I was stoked about the idea because I apparently hate myself and printed the doll in a light skin color on my Elego Mars 2 Pro printer as soon as I got the files. Here you can see the finished and sanded pieces that I put into little containers so no parts will get lost. The first thing I did was stringing the arms and adding magnets to the head cap and faceplate of the doll. Then I took a long elastic to be able to string her entire body so I would be able to make some patterns for her clothes. When I was done, she looked like this. Okay, let's start with... Yeah, what should I even start with? Every time I looked at the doll I found more and more layers and details and little things here and there that made it super hard to even find a good point to start and made me already question my decision to participate in this collab. I decided it would probably be best to start with the bodysuit because everything else from the outfit will be added or attached to that bodysuit later on. Except the hair and accessories of course. I made a pattern off camera and took some super elastic black jersey. Here I already cut out the pieces for the bodysuit and will first attach the back pieces to the front piece and sew the side seams, finished sides in. I make sure to iron flat the seam allowances on the inside after sewing. I then glue around the seam allowances on the bottom of the legs and do the same on the sleeves. I also glue around the top seam allowance of the sleeves. After this, I could sew together the sleeves, finished sides in. Turned inside out, they looked like this. Now I need to glue around the top seam allowance of the bodysuit and then close a tiny piece of the back seam to be able to close the inside side or inside, get it? Because side is inside the word inside. Anyway, I close those seams of the legs together with the crotch seam. I turn it inside out and now we just need to attach the sleeves to the armpits. I did that by hand off cam. Let's make some lace. For that I decided to make some vector graphics in Adobe Illustrator and cut them out of some fabric vinyl with my dad's Cricut. I'm ironing the lace onto some white cotton fabric. It's super subtle and looks really nice this way. I'm adding some fray check around the corners to prevent the fabric from fraying later on and then cut it out with my tiny scissors. After I was done with this, I can now attach the lace to the bodysuit by simply gluing it on. Let's make our collar piece. It consists of a lot of pattern pieces and I also iron on some gold fabric vinyl details to some parts. See? A lot of pieces! I first add some black lining to the top seams of the collar. After that I'm sewing on the lila what? <laughs> lower collar pieces finished sides in. I make sure to always iron everything in place so it's nice and flat. I'm now sewing the side back pieces to the sides of the front piece. And then glue around the bottom seam allowance. I cut it into little pieces with scissor snaps to be able to glue around the curved parts nicely. And here's the finished piece. 
I added a closure and also the little red fabric with a small golden gem. Ok, let's make her red skirt. For that I cut out the pattern piece from red fabric first and glue around the bottom seam allowance. I made the lace myself as well by making vector graphics, cutting them with fabric vinyl, ironing them onto white cotton fabric and cutting everything out by hand. Now I just need to sew the lace to the red skirt. The next thing I'm doing is folding around the top seam allowance of the red skirt and create a little tunnel to be able to pull through an elastic ribbon later. Here you can see me pulling in the ribbon. And of course the needle slipped out. <laughs> oh no! Don't, don't, don't! It pulled out. Ah! <laughs> I rescued it. But luckily I could rescue it. After closing the back seam, the finished skirt looks like this. Let's make her black skirt. For that I created a circle skirt pattern, cut it out from black fabric and will add some golden elements first. I already ironed them on and just have to remove the top vinyl. After that I'm going to glue around the seam allowance of the skirt. And then I can gather the middle parts of the golden elements of the skirt by hand. To make the little golden gems on her black skirt, I will be reusing my mold that I used for making gems on my Musa doll. I mix some black UV resin and pour it into the mold. After curing, I can demold them. I'm adding some round shaped gems to them as well and gloss everything over with some clear UV varnish. After that, I just add a little golden element to the middle part. Now I just need to take some gold chrome powder and rub it onto the elements. This is how they turned out in the end. They look so cute! Now I can take my black skirt and glue those elements onto the gathered parts. Ok, let's make the final parts of the skirt, the white apron parts. For the middle apron part I cut out the main pattern piece from white cotton fabric and made some lace the same way I did the lace before on the skirt. I then simply glue the lace onto the fabric part. For the side pieces I also made some lace. I already glued around the seam allowance of the fabric piece and will now just glue that on top of the lace. I also added some interfacing to make the fabric less transparent in the end. Ok, time to finally add the apron pieces to the black skirt. I just pin them on and hem them in place first. I prepared a waistband off camera and will just attach this to the skirt, finished sides in. And here's the skirt all done. For a closure I added a little snap button. Let's make the back ribbon. For that I take a fabric stripe and glued around the top and bottom seam allowance already. I then fold it in half and close the seam allowance. Ironed in place it looks like this. For the other ribbon parts I cut a fabric strap like this and will glue around all the seam allowances. Noelle's ribbon also has a second pair of ribbon, if that makes sense, with some golden parts, so I iron these golden parts onto the red fabric first and then cut and glue around the seam allowances on this part. Ok, let's put together the ribbon. First I place the red gold part onto the long ribbon part and put on top the looped part. I fold it in the middle and hemmed it with a needle and a thread. In the end I just needed to add a little strap of fabric in the middle of the ribbon and the ribbon is done. Ok, let's make her wig. For that I already made a wig cap off camera and prepared some purple greyish yarn wefts as well. 
I will be gluing them layer by layer with my trusty hot glue gun. After I finished the first layer, I already cut it short, so it will be easier to style later. I used some cheap hair gel for styling. When cutting the hair, I first cut it with scissors and then use an eyebrow razor to fade out the ends of the hair. This process is tedious and I had fibers basically flying around everywhere in my face and mouth, but it was really worth it. Here you can see me gluing and cutting the first layer of the bangs. Ah yes, the monk stage, but I really like how it looks so far. Sometimes in between I'd like to spray my process with some got to be hairspray glue. For her little braid, I just braided one weft, I can just add it to the wig with glue. Let's make her some eyes. To make her eyes, I made a vector graphic on my computer and printed it on some cardboard and covered it with some shiny self-adhesive vinyl. I then test out a sphere size that fits Noelle's eyes perfectly. Yep, this looks good. Then I add some UV resin to the sphere I want to use and then cut out the iris and add it. I said, add it. Ah, okay, phew, worked. Yes. I then cure it under my UV lamp. It's hard. I mix some white UV resin. This Loki looks like frosting and I want to eat it. <laughs> Forbidden snack. <laughs> Drip this in. I remove some bubbles with my lighter and cure it again. Time to demold. Oh wow, it looks really nice. But I think the iris is a bit big, so I made some more eyes of Ken and even added a little glitter to them. And they look so cute. All right, time for the face up. As always, after spraying with her with MSC, I add a bunch of micro glitters to the skin first. Then I use my hand rolled Mungyo pastels and add shading to her cheeks, nose, forehead and chin. I then use some darker pastels to start shading her lips. After sketching out her eyeliner with a pencil off camera, I start going in with black acrylic paint and the tiniest brush I could find. The face was so small it was really really hard to draw this eyeliner perfectly. In the end it turned out really nice though. For some reason, even before starting the other eye, I decided to sketch out her eyebrow already with some grey pastels. I erased them in shape with my super dirty kneaded eraser. It wasn't easy to get the right shape for her eyebrows, which is why I added pastels and erased them for quite a bit until I was happy with the shape. In the end I made it work though and could also add some grey watercolor paint to the eyebrows for some single hairs. Looks really good so far. Let's add the lower lashes on the second eye. There's no secret to it than just trying and trying and trying. You pretty much just need a lot of exercise to be able to draw those tiny lashes with a brush. I use watered down gouache paint to paint them on. <laughs> My autocorrect made goulash paint, that's, that's funny. After I was satisfied I also add some dark brown shading with pastels and a brush to the eyes. I love her look so much. Now for the fun part. Shimmers! 
I add them with a brush and use a little more than I will actually need in the end because spraying her with MSC will make them fade a little again. I also gave her some 3D lashes off camera and now just have to gloss her lips and waterline. And here's the face all done. Oh wow, she looks really really pretty. Oh. Time for the most frightening part, her armor. Rupixi was so nice to sculpt her armor in Blender for me so that I could print most of it on my Elegant Mars 2 Pro printer. Even the tiniest parts printed perfectly. Yay! Here I just laid down all the pieces to see if everything was complete. I had to paint all the armor pieces and will just show you on a few how I did it. I first added a pearly white color to all the white armor pieces. I did that with my airbrush. This way the armor has a slightly metallic look and I really really like that. I then decided to buy some Baleo liquid gold paint. Wow, it really looks like liquid gold. Ah. And then I just need to take a brush and apply the paint to all the gold parts of the armor. The great thing about this liquid gold is that you don't need a black base in order to apply the paint opaque. It's opaque on pretty much every base color, which is great. After all the pieces were painted, I also printed and painted some roses that I will add to Noelle's armor. Here I'm gluing one rose to the bracer of her armor. And yeah, here you can see all the final pieces painted. It was a lot of work, but it really looks like Noelle's armor and I'm so so happy with it. We also decided to just mold her gloves onto the hands and print the hands again because it was way easier this way. Time to assemble her outfit, right? Let's start with her headdress first. I simply used some Uhu Alleskleber to attach the headdress to her hair. I'm doing the same with a little shield on her braid and with the roses on the side of her headdress. And I almost forgot about the vision. For those of you who don't play the game, every Genshin character has a vision. The vision is what gives the character their elemental power. There are the Animal, Geo, Electro, Dendro, Hydro, Pyro and Cyro visions. They are gifted to them by the gods for various reasons. Noelle actually gained her vision after failing her seventh selection test for the Knights of Favonius. Discouraged and exhausted, she can barely get back on her feet despite not wanting to give up on her dream. In that moment, acting Grandmaster Jean walked out of the knight's headquarters. Noel greeted her with a precise knight's salute, which Jean returned with her own salute. On that day, she not only received recognition from Jean, but also gained the Geovision. This gave her even more motivation to pursue her dream of becoming a knight in the future and keep serving the people of Mondstadt. For her right shoulder piece, I ironed on some vinyl shapes onto some cotton fabric and cut them out. I fold them together and then glue them onto a piece of white satin ribbon. Now they just need to be finished up with some golden half beads. This whole piece will then be glued to her right shoulder. Looks good! For the back of her outfit I made a little buckle piece from cardboard, covered it with UV resin and painted it gold. I then add some white satin ribbon and black fabric stripes to it. To finish everything off, I add some more golden elements and just glue everything to the backside of the outfit. Okay, let's glue her chest plate on the outfit. 
As you can see, I couldn't make her outfit removable. It would have just not worked out on this small scale. But it's fine, because I don't want to undress her anyways anymore. And here you can see the finished back ribbon that I will be adding to the dress. Alright, let's make her belt. I actually made it live on stream, so if you want to catch me on Twitch sometime, I'm streaming 4 times a week. <laughs> My first real like e-girl-ish doll. We did it guys! <laughs> She's perfect now, thank you. I'm speechless, so gorgeous. <laughs> I'm so so glad uh, that you liked her and that you have been part um, of this journey because this is a stream only doll so there won't be a video. Mm -hmm. Stream exclusive! Stream squad! Cheers! <laughs> For the belt I use a stripe of fun foam, applied some glue to it and covered it with a PU leather stripe. I then made a little bucket piece out of cardboard again. After it was cured and painted I just need to glue it to the end of the belt. I added some more pieces and an eyelet and painted a chain gold as well and added it to the belt. I've made her ribbon off camera in the same way that I made the back ribbon and added the shield with some glue. Now I just need to glue the ribbon onto the belt. To be able to attach her leg armor pieces I had to cut them in half and will just glue them around her legs. The same goes for the knee and thigh pieces. And in the very end we also decided it would be easiest to just print her feet with sculpted shoes on and paint them. So I printed them, painted them and added some wires to the top of them. The last tiny piece were her little red ribbons that will be attached to the side of the shoes. And with that the doll is actually done. Are you ready to see the finished result? This doll was definitely one of the craziest and most detailed dolls I have ever done so far. Many times during the process I thought I couldn't do it, because her outfit just seemed so endlessly detailed. But in the end I'm very happy that I pulled through and made it happen because I really really love how she turned out. Making this doll must have taken 5-6 to six weeks and it's crazy that you can see the process now in just about 30 minutes. Even though she gave me so much trouble, existential crisis and took more than a month to make, I'm so happy I didn't give up and pulled through with her process. I'm so in love with her and I hope you are as well. Who's your favorite Genshin Impact character? Please let me know in the comments below. Also thank you so much to my dear patrons and Twitch subscribers for always encouraging me and supporting me. You guys are the best. If you also want to support me and that even for free, you can just comment under the video and leave a like. And also please make sure to subscribe for more crazy doll action in the future. Halloween's gonna be extra, I promise. Thank you guys so much for watching and have a beautiful creative day. Bye! Yay, done! <laughs> okay.